Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So recently, Macaulay gave us a way to load our PS2 game ISOs over a USB stick instead of using the network. Obviously, the big benefit to using this method or using a USB stick or a USB hard disk drive is because you would have a lot better performance in copying the game over. So in today's video, I want to look at that and I wanna show you how to do that yourself step by step. Let's just go ahead and let's jump into the main repository. So also over the last couple of days, 10.50 came out for the PlayStation 4. And what that means is, is that every time a brand new version of the PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 system software comes out, we have to fix the offsets of the main master core project. So if we come over here and we look at some of the commits here, what you will see is, is that he added in PS4 10.50 support. Now, there was also a couple of other repos that came with this. And I guess before I move forward, I will just say for the PlayStation 5 7.00, it is not working at this time, or at least I don't know about it. Now, the other repository that you may want to take a look at is, is this one right here, which is the PS2 USB Elf Loader. So what this will allow you to do is to load L files off of your USB stick instead of sending them over with a tool such as Netcat GUI. Now inside of this, he talks a little bit about how to set it up. And basically what you are going to need is a USB drive that's formatted with XFAT and MBR. And in the root of the directory, just have a folder right here called ELFs. For the most part, you won't have to worry about this if you follow my guide, but I did want to just leave this information in here. The other repository that is new is going to be the PS2 USB game loader itself. Now, scrolling down through this, he also talks about how to configure your USB stick. Again, XFAT and MBR, but there is a folder in the root directory just simply called games. And for right now, you just create a folder with the game name and you put the ISO into it. And then the other thing that I did want to mention is, is that there is a PlayStation 2 emulator compatibility sheet. You do want to make sure that your game will at least run in here, seeing something that is green. And then finally, a tip for preparing your USB drive is, is that once you have it in inserted into your computer, it should be showing as XFAT. Obviously, you can delete your partitions and then create another partition that is XFAT if you don't already have one. And then one other thing is, is that make sure that you are using MBR for master boot record and you can find out if you are by going to your disk and then going to properties. And then finally, coming right over here and looking to see if the partition style is set to MBR. Okay, let's just go ahead and let's jump into configuring our USB stick now. Okay, so if you use this save game right here that Echo Stretch has went ahead and created, you definitely want to come in here and pick your version. Obviously, I'm going to be using a PlayStation 4 in 10.50, so I'm just going to download this file right here. Okay, so once you have downloaded it, go ahead and open it up, and as well, go ahead and navigate to your USB drive. Begin by selecting the PlayStation 4 right here and just dragging that over to your USB drive. Next up, if you go into the XFAT root folder, then you will see there is a games as well as an elfs. We're going to select both of these and we're just going to copy these right into the root of our D drive. And then if you go into games, it has a folder that is called the game name. And here is where you put the ISO image. So let's just go ahead and let's add a game to it. So now that we know the format, we can just remove that game folder and we can come back in here and create a new folder. 
and I'm just going to call this Genesis because this is going to be where my Genesis emulator is at. And now I'm just going to paste in an image there. So we're going to come back over here. We are going to create a, another folder here. And this one is going to be Clona 2. And then we're going to come right into this folder. And again, we'll go ahead and we will paste in our clona2.iso image. And now we're going to add in Sly Cooper. So I'm going to create a folder again. And this time we'll just name this Sly and I will paste in that image. Okay, once everything completes, let's go ahead and take that over to our PlayStation 4 that is jailbroken. Okay, so taking the save file, let's head over to Apollo again. And what we need to do is we need to reassign our save game yet again. And that is because the offsets change between version numbers. So we'll jump in here to USB saves. There is obviously one for each of the regions. So 2199 is for the United States and Europe has the one right here, which is ending in the 2282. So since I am in the United States, I'm going to go ahead and grab the 2199 and press X here. We are going to copy that save game to the HDD. And I am going to say that I want it to be resigned. Now at this point, if I just go back over to hard disk drive saves and we go to the 2199, as you can see right here, and we view the save game details, it is already assigned to my user ID or really my account ID. So that is the reason that this will load on my retail PlayStation 4. This is the other thing I will need to do is head over to settings and we're going to go down to application save data management and then save data in the system storage. And then we're going to copy that to a USB storage device, which would be this one right here. We're going to copy it and that has been completed. So now we can actually head over to our PlayStation 4 running 10.50. Okay, on the PlayStation 4 that's on 10.50, what we will do is we'll go into our settings here and we're going to go to application save data management and then save data on the USB storage device. And it would be that one right there. So we're going to go ahead and select copy. Okay, so now we are ready to play Okage Shadow King. One other thing was, was that yesterday I played through Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Demo. If you would like to check that out, feel free to go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's fire up Okage Shadow King. All right, we'll press the start button here and restore the game. And there we go. It says, do you want to load the MasterCore PS2 USB Game Loader Elf? And again, if you just copied those files simply out of Echo Stretches, then it did create a folder called Elf. And there was this file inside of it. I don't think I talked about that when originally we copied those over. But anyway, you should just be able to hit yes right here. And now it's asking, which of these games do you want to play? So remember, we had one called the Genesis. I'm going to select no on that one. We also had Clona 2. And then finally, we had Sly Cooper. And so we selected no on all of those. So it basically just kicks us back to this L file. And we are going to select yes to load it. And we are going to select the Genesis one here because this is the smallest one. Okay, so there is the Genesis loader. Now, it did load this game properly. It does say there's no ROMs found on the CD. I must have grabbed one of my ISO images before I added anything to it. But there we go. We are again inside of Okage Shadow King. And there is the very first 
game running. So unfortunately, you can't really just kind of select another game. They're really the only way to get back to that screen is to just come back up and just close the game itself. And now you would just have to reload it in order to load a different game. I actually want to jump over and try to play Sly Cooper. So even over the USB, you're definitely still going to take at least, I don't know, maybe about 45 to 50 seconds to load, maybe a little bit more. So there is a drastic improvement of using this versus using the network to load. Okay, here is the moment of truth. And so we're going to create a save game file here. Sony Computer Entertainment presents. And there we go. Audio and all. Oh, it did crash. And we are seeing a few of these trophies pop right here. Okay, so these are coming directly from Okage Shadow King. Okay, so as you can see right here, there is a bunch of trophies that just popped and they all happened at this exact same time. So this could be something that uh, may flag your account as, you know, doing something that you weren't supposed to do. So I would hate to lose my account here, but as you can tell from the screenshots that is in here, it shows this one is gold and it was earned. And if you look at the screenshot, it is really just these trophies right here. So that probably isn't going to be too good for my account in the long run. But you know what? I do all of this for you all people. Let's now go ahead and let's try to play Kelowna 2. The game is loading up. And now one other thing to remember is that there is a compatibility list, but let's just see if this one will load. So we'll press the start button and we're going to select a new game here and we're going to select yes. I wonder if something about just saving the data is giving this thing a problem. I'm going to select yes here. And really, I just want to make sure that the game will load. Now saving. Save complete. Okay, so this one looks like it's getting a little bit further along than the other game did. Okay, so, so far, Genesis and Clona 2 is working right now. Sly Cooper did not work. Okay, mission start. See of tears and I really don't know much about this game like I'm not sure if this is a RPG or what oh I thought you could kill those things Well, so it does appear that Clona 2 is working just perfectly fine. Again, here I am. I'm running a PlayStation 4, obviously on 10.50 because I've got the Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw demo installed. And as well as you can obviously see, I'm connected to the PlayStation network here. But that is uh that is pretty amazing so obviously there's other games that you probably would want to test in order to see what is working and what isn't but as far as i can tell right now here is the brand new usb loader and at least with two out of the three games that i tried it was working so anyway i hope that this video helped somebody out there at least get theirs up and running and i will see you on the next one michael out